What's up, everybody? Welcome to Nest Fitness. I'm this motherfucker. Hey, I want to talk today a little bit about some tests. About an old saying you may have heard before. It's called, uh, test is test. And I'm going to tell you how this is a true statement on one hand, but it's a half truth on the other. And here's what I mean. Now, I've done some videos, earlier videos, you can go back and look, uh, where I explain ester chains and things like that. Give you a scientific breakdown on how carbon atoms are moved around and this and that and the other. And this is how you get the ester chain. But just to simplify it real quick, an ester chain, I want you to view it as a time release mechanism. Just like any medication you get that's time released, an ester chain will determine how fast it gets to your system and how long it'll stay in there. All right. Now, when you get tests in its raw form, when you're at the laboratory and these scientists are doing whatever they're doing to fix this shit, the raw form of test is going to be test. So the statement the test is test is true because the raw is going to be test. What they're going to do is add an ester chain to it. You take an ester chain like SIP, you got five to seven days uh, before you get down to the half-life. That means it's going to be slower getting into your system. It'll stabilize and then it'll start reducing itself. And then in five to seven days, it'll be down to the half-life. Take something like PROPE. It's going to be faster acting. It's a short ester chain. It'll get in and out of your system down to the half-life within two days. All right, so the statement the test is test on paper is a correct statement. Here's why it's a half truth. Okay, when you're putting something into your body like that, um, it's going to be a, a slight difference in strength, a slight difference in how fast or slow it's getting in and out of your system, and therefore the chances of certain side effects are going to take place. One of the side effects I want to talk about is aromatation, that when you're taking probe, it's more likely to aromatize at a higher rate and therefore let's just say you're taking trt you've been on damn enanthate for trt for the last 10 years and then all of a sudden you're like you know what i'm going to try probe the only real difference in trying probe is other than the fact it's going to be more frequent in, in injections is the fact that um now it's going to aromatase faster so therefore you're going to have a spike in estrogen now what i'm trying to make you understand is this does not mean it's going to be true for you because everybody's different and how their body reacts to a compound so i can't say for 100 percent sure that it's going to happen to you i can just tell you that it's common that probe aromatases faster than say enanthate because it's got a shorter ester so i want you to keep that in mind so if you've been using enanthate or sip for your trt for years and not had to use an, uh, an ai now all of a sudden you may have to use an ai because now you got to watch for something that you may have to control and if you're not ready for that, it could fuck you up. It's going to get your estrogen out of out of spike because you're like, you know, I've been using SIP for 10 years and I ain't had no problems. And now all of a sudden I'm like, my nipples are itching and hurting and I'm all damn teary-eyed at movies and shit. So what's going on? Because you got an estrogen spike. So that's that's just something I wanted to just bring bring to your attention. Just to go back on uh, these estrus. Um, you know... When it comes down to it, your body's just going to recognize it as test. You know, your nuts are going to say, hey, I see a substitute in here. There's no need for me to churn and make my own testosterone no more. I see a substitute. I'm going to grab it. I'm going to use it. Your body's just going to say test is test. That's true. But be aware that certain different side effects can and will happen. The rotation rate is going to be different between the different esters. You may have to take other means of control to get them. All right. And also, um, whew, shit, that's about, it. you know, there's other side effects too you might want to watch out for. And, and some people have argued me with this, but here's the facts. I don't use Test E anymore. I used it. I started using Test E when I started using any compounds, and I used it exclusively, different labs, different brands of Test E uh, for the longest time. And I had the baddest acne breakouts i've ever had by using test d the first time i switched to test sip because my supplier was out and he didn't have any test d and i said okay fuck it i'll try test sip for the first time and when i did the first cycle i didn't have hardly any acne at all and after that i, I questioned i was like that's kind of weird ain't it because test is test so what the fuck i mean on paper test e and test sip are so similar uh it, it, it's unreal how similar they are but for me, I'm going to get acne on test E, and I'm not going to get it as bad with, with SIP. 
I don't get it as bad with um, Sussanine. I've never used Prope as a, as a single compound, as my test base, never. Because I don't like frequent injections and I don't like the PIP. All right, I've always just used SIP, Ananthe, or Sussanine. But I can tell you for me and my body, it does not like test E when it comes to acne. Everything else is the same. It has the same aromatization rate for me. I, I can control it just as easy as anything else, but it gives me more acne. So for you, all right, this is something that you would have to determine for yourself, but for you, it may be no difference whatsoever between SIP and Enanthate, all right? Them two ester chains may not affect you in any kind of fucking way whatsoever. For me, it raises my, the, the chance of me having bad acne is significantly raised for me. So therefore, I don't use Enanthate no more. And some people are gonna say, well, I don't know how, because, you know, test is test and nothing's different but the ester chain and the ester chain ain't got shit to do with acne. Hey, maybe all that's true, I can just tell you what happens to my body. And that's one of the things that you're gonna learn in this game, is that just because the scientific part says this and just because on paper it says that does not mean it's gonna affect you that way. It just means it's gonna affect the common core of people who use it. 99.9% .9 of people who use it are gonna have these effects and nothing else, and then you're gonna be that fucking 0.1% and, and be like, uh, you know, there's some people out there that's so estrogen sensitive, they can just look at a bottle of test and damn, start aromatizing, I mean, and then there's other people like me, I can take a gram of test all fucking day with no AI and have very, very minimum problems. Uh, I mean, of course, I'll aromatize a little bit, my estrogen will raise, but it's not gonna get to the point where I'm getting gyno or anything like that. You gotta learn this shit on your own. There's no cookie cutter uh, book I can give you on that or how to use it. I can just tell you what happens. So anyway, I hope this uh, video kind of explains a little bit about different esters and how test is test and how your body does recognize it as what it is. But each different ester is gonna play a little bit different role in your body and you need to know how to control that. So if you're a rookie and you're just getting started, Start with a long ester first and learn it. Do your blood work, do your base blood work first so you know where your natural levels are. Run it after six weeks or so, take your, you know, do blood work, see how it raises, do it again at the end of, close to the end of the cycle, and then again after you come off P PCT. And that way you're gonna have a good base knowledge of how your body regulates this compound. Once you learn that, then you can start experimenting with other ones and do the same th exact thing and then it'll come a time where I ain't gonna say you ain't gonna need blood work but there'll come a time where your body you can recognize your body and you'll know when your estrogen is going up when it's going down when different things are happening different types of side effects you'll be like okay I know I need to take this to counteract that all of that will come with the experience so don't rush it just you know do it the right way that way you'll learn you'll have experience and the rest come come together so that's all I got for today. I'm trying to get some more videos out. I know I've been slacking like fuck the last month or two, but there's just been a lot, a lot of damn crazy shit going on. But anyway, we're getting back on track now, baby. And uh, we're gonna start pumping these videos back out. So let me know in the comment section if you need some damn particular videos because damn, I feel like I talk about the same shit all the time. I don't wanna bore the fuck out of y'all day. So let me know if there's something else in particular you wanna know about and I'm gonna put that shit up. How about that? All right, so we'll check you out later.